Hi friends and welcome back to the channel. My name is Chloe Taylor, the creator of Coffee. And today for Coffee Unfiltered, I am actually showing you a past broadcast last week where I took part in the Sims 4 Stay and Play event. I started working on building my dream apartment in San Myshuno. And so I wanted to show this to you. So I have kind of like cut it up, sped it up, and it's only halfway done. So there will be a part two to this eventually. And I would love to know what you guys want to actually talk about or hear about. So leave me some questions or comments or whatever down below. And if I feature whatever you've asked or want to know more about, I will, or if, if I feature it, I'll make sure like I put it in that next video. So today, while we go over this, I wanted to talk to you guys a little bit about anxiety. And also like there's some other like life update things that I want to get to too. I wanted to showcase my Animal Crossing town this week, but it's just not done. <laughs> it's not done and it's not pretty enough to see the internet yet. So we're not doing that this week. I decided to do this instead. But um, I really wanted to sit and talk to you guys first about anxiety a little bit because I actually saw this post go up on Rory Play's Twitter, which if you don't know who Rory is, she's a lovely, lovely human being. Um, I'll put her links down below as well as a link to that post. Um, it was just like a really long form post about anxiety and how she's kind of dealt with it. And then I also saw this video pop up in my feed, which I actually have not watched it yet, but uh, Deli was talking about dealing with anxiety in isolation. And I felt like that's something I really wanted to speak about first. I actually have a cup of tea today, not coffee, because my stomach is upset. And when my stomach gets upset, I have to stop drinking coffee for a little bit. Usually that helps. So, um, unfortunately for me, but you know what? We love green tea here too. So it's okay. We're not, we're not biased. We love coffee and tea. Coffee is just the one that I like more. <laughs> so there are a few things I wanted to talk about in with anxiety and I have no plans for this. Like I haven't written anything out. We're just going to go completely free form. But the first thing that I want to say is I guess I want to give you a little bit of perspective as to like where I am in my journey with anxiety. I had a video that I don't even know if it's still public. It was part of the Lunar Zodiac series where I like redid Urban Sims house at one point and used it in Lunar Zodiac. And I talked about how in that video, I had recently been diagnosed with like a slew of conditions. I had recently started seeing a psychiatrist and a therapist at that time. And I had like, there were, there were so many diagnoses that came out of that. And some of them I actually don't even agree with at this point going through how much healing I've gone through since then. But some of them have definitely had to have been worked through. And the biggest takeaways that I have that I really wanted to get to are number one, I used to have really bad social anxiety, like really, really, really bad. And not even to the point, like if I was comfortable with someone, I would be okay. But ultimately what I found for me and my experience, and honestly, when we're social distancing, this maybe isn't even as appropriate because we're not in social situations right now or we shouldn't be. But with social anxiety, I feel like I can stand here in front of you today and say that I have overcome that. I have healed from that and I have kind of moved forward from that. But I definitely still deal with generalized anxiety, which I'll be talking about too. But with social anxiety, what I found for me, the root of the issue, and this is what I always say when you're kind of dealing with situations like this. And I'm by no means an expert. I'm not going to like, I'm not a therapist. I'm not a psychiatrist. Please don't use anything that I say in this video as a replacement for those for yourself. Like get the help that you need. There is telehealth available in most places um, on the internet. But what I had found was number one, when you are looking at something in terms of mental health, you don't ever want to just be like, oh yeah, now I just feel better all of a sudden. You want to actually go to the root of the cause of what is making that come up in you. Go to the root because the way I look at it with mental health, it's like a garden. Like imagine you are a garden and all of a sudden weeds are growing in your garden. The weeds are the mental health problems, right? You don't wanna just cut the tops of the weeds off and I mean, we could have a whole discussion about how like weeds are literally just flowers. We just pretend they're bad. Like 
that's a whole other topic for a whole other time. Like what is a weed? Um, they can exist too. But um, for this analogy, you know, but you know, you want to go to that weed and actually go to the root of it. You want to pull it out by the root. You don't just want to cut the top off or it's going to keep coming back. So what I had actually come to find with my social anxiety for me is that I was dealing mostly with this disempowerment of self. Um, I fully attribute a lot of this to my childhood and this is where we're going to get real deep, but I fully attribute so much of this to my own upbringing. I was raised in a very religious home and there's nothing wrong with that. I don't want to, I'm never going to be that person that's like, oh, your religion's bad and it's bad for you. Like, no, I think everybody, like as long as your religious or spiritual practice works for you, then it's the right one for you. And that being said, um, I grew up in a very religious home and a lot of that, there was definitely a lot of conditioning of don't be your authentic self. Don't do this. This is bad. Don't do this. This is bad. And I think all of us could say that we've probably experienced that to some degree in our lives because we come into the, this life with nothing. We come into this life literally in my eyes, perfect. And it's those outside influences of family or friends or religion or culture or whatever it might be that start to influence that and actually help build who you're actually going to be and what standards you're going to hold yourself to. And so really getting to the root of this social anxiety for me was about asking myself, like, why am I so afraid to be my own unique self? Why am I so afraid to put myself out there? And what I had come to find is that number one, religiously, I felt like there was so much like the religion that I grew up in. Definitely, there was no sexual freedom whatsoever, like definitely sexually repressed. And I don't mean that in like a like even just in finding my own personal sexuality, which I identify as bisexual. Um, now, but that's something that like was never really allowed to be explored because it was, you know, we were taught that that was so bad. Um, and then there's also like, even in terms of just the influences around me, there was so much of like, oh, you should go and do this thing. And the way that I grew up, I was definitely taught to cater more to the home. And I think this is typical of a lot of women too, but not everyone. Um, I was definitely taught to be more mindful of rearing children and taking care of the home. And that was what, like, for most of my adolescent life, I believed that that's what I would be doing. And it wasn't until I actually moved away for college that that started to really unravel for me. And I was like, you know what? I don't even really like kids. Like, don't get me wrong. I think that kids can be a joy for others, but they're just not for me personally. I don't have it in me at this point in my life to actually raise children. It's just not something that I want for my life, um, me or my husband. And with that, like there was so much that I had to kind of unbecome. I like to think of life as this, you're not trying to become anything. You're actually trying to unbecome everything that you're not. And whether it be an influence or something else that was put on you or you were made to believe, none of it is your fault. You know, I think all parents and friends and neighbors and cultures, you know, they most people, not everyone, but most people have good intentions with the things that they're trying to teach their young. I really do believe that. And so I don't, I can't even sit here and like blame those influences really either, because I think the intentions were pure. It just wasn't what my life was supposed to be. And so, so much of what I did, I also had a lot of influences around me without saying too much, because I'm never going to be that person that's going to come online and like drag the people in my life. That's just not who I am. But without going like too personally into it, I do believe that there were a lot of examples taught to me of like, oh, don't be like this person. Don't be like that person. Don't do this. And I had it conditioned into me that I was morally a good person. And I knew psychologically how to get rewarded for being a morally good person. It was like, oh, I know that this behavior is punishable, but this behavior allows me to have my freedom I say with quotes, this behavior allows me to have my freedom and be able to basically live in peace with the people around me. So 
that was the path that I chose as a child, which I think anybody in that position most likely would have chosen that. And so as a child, I chose the path of more freedom. I chose the path of more trust. I chose the path that said, okay, if I make myself this way, my parents will respect my space. They'll allow me to go do A, B, and C. But in reality, what that did was it actually made me more of a closed off person. I didn't celebrate my uniqueness. I didn't feel like there was anything unique about me that was worthy of celebration. And that carried into a lot. I mean, I could sit here and tell you stories for days on how celebrating my uniqueness has definitely been something I've had to learn as an adult um, from every little like accomplishment in my life. But that's a story for another time. So what I'm getting at with this social anxiety is that was really the root of it. I didn't know how to celebrate my unique individuality. And... So now, even now I'm on the precipice of changing that again. You know, I came out in like 2018, I think, as an eclectic witch. I still have been an eclectic witch this entire time. I've just gotten less pronounced about it because, you know, there is a lot of shaming and blaming online and, oh my gosh, you worship the devil. And, you know, there's all these like misconceptions about it. (laughs) But I'm at a place now where I'm coming to understand that like, I came here, everybody, not just me, everybody comes here with unique gifts for a reason. Only you can bring out like whatever gifts that you have in the way that you can do that. Literally, you are the only person on the planet that can do it that way. There might be millions of other people doing what you're doing, but with your own uniqueness and your own individuality, you are the only one that can do it exactly like that. And there is power in that. And so not only was that at the root of it, that I didn't know how to celebrate my uniqueness, so I didn't think anybody around me really wanted to see it or hear about it. But the second thing was that I also felt like there was such a status or a state of disempowerment within me. And this is something I still struggle with a lot where I do consider myself to be an empath and I am somebody that I will constantly try to transmute the energy around me. Meaning, and I've done this my entire life. If somebody is upset, I immediately take those feelings on and it becomes my fault. And I'm like, oh my gosh, how can I transmute this space right now to make this better? And that's something that I don't know if I just picked that up really early on, But that's something that I've always been able to do. But what I'm having to learn now as an adult is to set up better boundaries with that and recognize that when energy like that comes on, if somebody has an issue, I'm going to, I'm going to get very, very real with you. (laughs) If somebody has an issue with you or what you're doing or doesn't like something about you, I know that this is so easier said than understood a lot, but it has nothing to do with you. I promise Literally, even the misconceptions that I have about other people, because we all do this, we all have these narratives that we tell ourselves about people in our lives. Nobody is perfect. We all have these narratives. Well, so-and-so is like this. And sometimes it might be true. It might be a narrative that they choose to live their life by. You know, this goes for people that you consider your friends and people that you consider not your friends. (laughs) But it has nothing to do with that person. They might present themselves in a way and you might take that in internally and say, okay, yeah, they're like this. But at the end of the day, you will never know that person fully. You will never know what that person is like because you can't be inside their head. You cannot. So all of that being said, being an energy transmuter, I feel like I took a lot of energy upon myself to try to make things better around me. And I Notice this in particular when I think about like the earlier years of my life in like middle school and high school. And when I take those, when I remember like the accounts of like friendships or arguments with friendships or whatever it might be, 99.9% of the time, I was always the one who would take the blame and try to make it better immediately, whatever I could do, because I took everything so personally. And I'm coming to understand with the social anxiety that like, If somebody has a problem with the way I look or the way I smell or the way I do things or the way that I choose to lead my life, 
It has nothing to do with me and it has nothing to do with you. It has everything to do with that person and how they choose to perceive you. So I hope all of that made sense on the social anxiety aspect. What I'm telling you is that I don't really believe at this time point in time that I deal with a lot of social anxiety anymore. I don't, I shouldn't say that I'm like cured because I definitely think we all have those moments of feeling disempowered, of feeling like our uniqueness shouldn't be celebrated. And for me, that's what it was. Maybe your social anxiety is completely different than mine, but that was what I have found over the last couple of years working on that. Now, talking about generalized anxiety, um, with everything that's going on, I don't, I can't talk about it a lot because YouTube likes to flag stuff like that. But with everything going on in the world, I really want to challenge you guys to stop watching the news 24 seven, stop looking at your phone first thing in the morning, stop. And I'm not saying go uninformed because I definitely think there is this lie that we've all been told that like, oh my gosh, if you don't stay up to date on the current events of the world, you're being a fool and you're not looking at what's happening. And I think it's absolutely okay to educate yourself and to know what's happening, but you don't need to do it at every minute of every day. And I think that's where a lot of people, this fear is coming out. Now, I do believe in a collective unconscious. That is my belief system. You do not have to choose to have that belief system for yourself. But I do believe that collectively, we all have an energy. And I mean, scientifically, to a degree, a lot of this has been proven. <laughs> but I do believe that collectively, we all set the tone for the energy of the world. So the more of us that are invested in fear, more fear is what is going to play out. And the more of us that are invested with kind of taking it upon ourselves to rest, relax, put ourselves on pause, you know, um, and granted there, I understand that there are many of us that cannot do that. There are people in the workforce that have to work. There are people that have children they need to provide for. Like, please know that from my perspective, I understand that I am coming from a very privileged place. I understand that I work from home. I've been a creator for seven years. I understand that my husband is extremely lucky and blessed that his work provided him with the ability to also work from home at this time. And I know that that is not everyone's reality. So please know that I recognize that I have insane privilege right now. So, you know, Obviously, what I'm saying is not going to be a message for everyone, but those of us that have time to be at home and you're just sitting there worrying and being afraid and letting yourself spiral into this, oh my gosh, the world is ending. What are we doing? Those are, those are, the, those are the people that I'm making this message for. So if that's where you're at right now, number one, I have a whole guided meditation that you should absolutely go listen to. I highly encourage that. Number two, just take daily, daily small steps to care more about you. You know, don't, like I said, maybe keep your phone in another room. If your body is tired, allow yourself to sleep. Don't make yourself have to get up at this time and go to bed at this time if that's just not working right now. You know, I think a lot of people are having a harder time sleeping right now. So allow yourself to rest. Allow yourself to get in touch with how you're feeling. And most importantly, this is where I really wanted to bring in that post that I saw from Rory. She talked about how in her Twitter post, you know, she has gained the coping mechanism or the ability to, I don't know if you'd call it a coping mechanism. Maybe she maybe said that, but she has gained the ability that when things like fear, anxiety, or, you know, these, this, the deep trenches of our mental mind, when she feels those things come up, she is in a state now where she'll say, you know, Hey, What's going on? It's like you treat your anxiety like it's almost not a part of you. And you say, hey, or it is a part of you, but you invite it. You say, hey, what's going on? Maybe you put yourself in a state where you sit down and envision, like you're sitting down for tea, as Rory lovingly put in this post. You're sitting down for tea with your anxiety and you're saying, hey, what's going on? How can I help? What can I do to make you feel safe? right now? What would be the best thing that I could do? And obviously you need to pick things that are wholly in your control because you can't 
control the state of the world right now. There is nothing, like the best thing you can do is tend to you and yourself and your needs. That is the best thing you can do. And to not spread this fear consciousness. Because the more that we spread the fear consciousness, the more that it's going to keep cropping up. So, and again, those are where my beliefs are. I understand that that's not for everyone. So, I hope that this helps. Um... I definitely do feel like I would love to do more tips on this. And that kind of leads me into my next topic. We're going to step away from the anxiety talk now and kind of get into a little bit more um, just for these last few minutes, a few things that I wanted to address. Number one, I have a secondary channel and shameless self plug, I guess, that is going through a massive upheaval and a huge rebrand. It was known as Cozy Kale before, which was cute, but it was all vegan food based, which yes, I am vegan. But, and don't get me wrong, that's not going to change, but something that I really got away from that I now feel like I have more time to dedicate to is being a witch, sharing my witchcraft with other people. And this actually is what made me think about making this video for Coffee Unfiltered is that this channel is going through a rebrand. It's it's now called Taurus in the Kitchen because I am a Taurus sun. Also, praise be, it is now Taurus season. Um, it's called Taurus in the Kitchen because I want to share more kitchen witchery. I want to share more eclectic witchcraft. I want to share uh, more astrology, which I already share astrology over there, but we're going to keep doing that. And we're going to rename Curious Cosmos to Star Soup, which I thought was really cute because we're going with like a kitchen type theme. Um, and we're going to be also sharing things like this self-help talking about the things that I really have done a lot of massive healing on myself and working through things with a therapist over the last several years. And like I said, I am not an expert. I am not a therapist, but I can share with you the things that I've experienced, the things that I know and the things that I've been through. And I am working on writing a self-help book. That's something I've been working on for a while and a cookbook. Um, I do too many things. Please make my mind stop. <laughs> but also don't because I kind of love the rush. But this channel is really about that. And I chose not to merge everything and put it here because frankly, I like having two communities and I love the people that love both communities. And I love the people that only love one community. But how this kind of does connect to this anxiety stuff is I am planning a relaunch of this channel around my birthday, possibly sooner, but I'm waiting for some things to come in the mail and post is a little bit crazy right now. So I am waiting for some stuff to come in the mail that I need to kind of get the filming going for restarting. But I am working on putting together a video that is going to be like witchcraft for, I don't want to say mental health because I feel like that is very loaded, but definitely for discomfort, witchcraft for discomfort. And when you're experiencing these things, what you can do to kind of ground and recenter yourself in your life. And even if you're not a witch or don't consider yourself one, I think that this information will be valuable. It's probably one of the first videos that I will lead with, with this relaunch. And so I wanted to bring that up and also talk about the relaunch because I'm always reinventing myself and I roll my eyes at myself, not because I'm afraid of your judgment, but I reinvent myself constantly, constantly. And this is like, I don't even know, one, two, three, I think this is like my fourth or fifth rebrand for my secondary, not for coffee. Coffee went through its own challenges, but I think this is like my fourth or fifth rebrand for my secondary brand. And I do feel like, mark my words, you know, we're going to black and white this and put it in a funny scene if it changes later. But I do feel like this is it. Like, this is something I've thought about for years, like this name in particular. So it's Taurus in the Kitchen because I am a kitchen witch slash an eclectic witch. And I really want to share more spirituality tarot, kitchen witchcraft, things like that. So check out that channel if you want to. If you don't, no sweat off my back. Doesn't bother me. Um, you know, if it's something that sounds interesting, great. If it doesn't, then it doesn't resonate. Take what resonates and leave the rest. And I feel like there was one more thing. Ah, my schedule. So last week, no videos on my channel. I posted in my community tab about it a couple of times, but basically 
I hate the way my schedule is right now, just in life in general. I hate bulk recording on the weekends. I hate it. I love it during the week when all my work is done and I just have to edit all week instead of recording and editing simultaneously. But it sucks because my husband works all week and then I work the weekends and we don't really have time for each other unless it's on, like only in the evenings. And I hate that. So basically what I have decided to do to kind of alleviate that for myself during this time is we're going to go from five uploads to four uploads. Uh, and I'm going to keep, I think I already put it in my new banner on YouTube, but we're going to be doing Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and Sunday. So I'm excited about it. We're still going to stick with like modded Mondays. We're still going to do coffee unfiltered on Wednesdays. We're still doing the Zodiac games on Fridays. And then Sundays I'm kind of going to leave open for, it will either be 100 baby, or it will be another modded video or a news video. That's kind of like my freebie. Like I get to decide what to put there. So maybe it'll be double coffee unfiltered. Maybe it'll be double Zodiac games. It's kind of like whatever I feel like Sunday is like the wild card day. So that's what we're looking at. I still plan to do uploads on those days at 12 p.m. Mountain Standard Time, which is 11 a.m. Pacific Time, if you don't know Mountain Standard Time, which most people, I feel like a lot of people know how to calculate Pacific, but like don't know the others. <clears throat> so um, I think... That's everything I wanted to cover in this video. I hope this was helpful. I know I didn't really give like tips on anxiety. I really just talked more about my experience and kind of where I'm at right now and hopefully gave you guys something to think about. That's I think majorly it. I wanted to give something to think about. So hopefully I gave you something to think about and I hope you'll come back next week. I am I really want to do an Animal Crossing tour next week. So like literally after I finish work today, I'm just going to go work on my island. I know it doesn't need to be perfect to show it off, but I have this vision in my mind of how like much I at least want to have done of it. So hopefully for the next Coffee Unfiltered, that's what we'll do. If not, who knows what it will be. Um, but I'll leave my links to all of my, my secondary channel and all the socials if you want to follow. Um, it's a lot more on the woke side of things. So um, if that's your if that's your cup of tea, <laughs> see what I did there? I'll see myself out in a moment. But uh, if that's what your cup of tea is, I would love to have you there. And yeah, I hope this message resonates. And like I said, if it did, wonderful. If it didn't, take what you need, leave the rest. And uh, all the information down below. I love you guys so, 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 so much. Please don't forget to follow me on Instagram and Twitter. I'm at CoffeeYT over on Twitch where I should be streaming tonight is the plan when this video goes up, but you guys will know because I always announce it on YouTube as well. And uh, I will catch you guys on Friday for some Zodiac games. All right, I love you. Bye. This is Coffee signing off.